Hello, Jay. We're going to take a bit of time, look at your Follow the Sun posting, as well as the, uh, the takeaway um, essay that you put up on the blog. So let's just kind of jump right into it. Uh, go to screen share here, and we'll start, uh, start going through your stuff. So, um, I, you know, I would, I would say that, um, that, that you came to this, uh, came to this class and this is just my observation. I mean, of course I, I reviewed your, um, your takeaway and got kind of where you were beforehand, but it was all, already evident that you, um, that you had been thinking about photography before you came to the class. I could recognize that because of the intensity from which you approached even the first project, the five characteristics of light project. Um, you were very deliberate and you were very careful about what you were doing. You asked um, some questions that told me that you were, uh, you're really interested in getting at the heart of what it was that we were doing and those kinds of things. So I, I feel like, you know, you started at a certain level and yet at the same time, were able to uh, really advance uh, in your own, in your own way. All the students in the class uh, basically started at different levels. Some didn't even have a camera yet, or some had never, you know, used a camera. Others had, uh, you know, a, a, you know, your basic, you know, like what you have, you know, the 70D or some sort of, uh, I call them prosumer course uh, uh, cameras. Uh, and uh, what that means is they're, they have professional controls, but at the same time, they are not, you know, going to be priced out of the range of a, of a consumer. So uh, a prosumer, the 70D line, 80D line, and stuff like that, it's a great way to get into uh, photography, if you're interested in using photography as a creative medium, um, those kinds of cameras at that price point, you know, somewhere between seven, eight hundred, you can spend as much as, you know, maybe eleven or twelve hundred if you get extra accessories and stuff. But that certainly is not, you know, as overwhelming as, you know, getting into three and four thousand dollars on pro cameras, which eventually you might want to look at if you continue with this and the photography is actually giving something back to you in, in terms of, uh, you know, earning a living and so on. So not that that's what you are, are ultimately interested in doing. And enough of that, let's uh, jump into some of your midday photos. Uh, this is funny. I don't know if you meant to do that, but you know, the, the sort of pole that kind of goes up there, you probably did. You probably saw that in position just like that. But, um, so again, we're looking at shadows. Uh, we, look, we, we talk about that quite a bit. Uh, the nature of the shadows tell us a lot about what time of day it is, how you as a photographer want us to feel, and, and so on. And I would say you, your, your compositions here in the midday are just as carefully thought out as, is, as if you were in the studio, which is not an easy thing to do. I mean, uh, perhaps it was natural for you to, to, to kind of come out and be able to sort of approach your image making in a lot of the same ways as you were doing it in the studio. But the main difference is when you're outside, the sun's moving all the time. Uh, in other words, you, you, you could be there and in 10 minutes, the light is totally different from what you were before. This is in contrast to the studio where you set up your light, you've got your still life. In the studio, that light doesn't have to move, right? It's not going to move until you move it. You could be there two hours and exploring the exact same quality of light. Outside, of course, completely different. Uh, the sun is constantly moving. You can't reposition the sun. You have to wait for it to do its thing. Uh, if the light is not coming from the correct direction, you have to identify when it will be coming in the right direction. So you can move um, and you can't move the horizon either. You know, if, if that way is east, you can't, you know, change that. Um, so there's a lot of things that, that sort of happen when you step outside that are uh, no longer under your control. However, what is under our control is what we see and the choices we make about what kind of light we're using and where we're positioning ourselves in relation to the subject. And um, you didn't seem to have too much trouble transitioning from that, at least by evidence of your photographs. It seems like you were able to observe and identify some specific things uh, you know, about the light and then incorporate uh, uh, your uh, kind of composition into that. Uh, so I would, I would say that, you know, the, and I've mentioned this with other students as well on, in their postings, that the, the midday sun is unique 
uh, for the time of year. This time of year, the sun is lower in the horizon, so you're going to get longer shadows than you might get here in July. Uh, because the sun is lower in, in, in the horizon as it moves across during the day. Um, that's why it's, it's, the days seem shorter. Uh, it's because the sun isn't going all the way up like that. It's, it, it has less distance for it to hit back under the horizon. During the summertime, the, the sun is coming up over at a higher arc. And so therefore, the higher the arc, the more dramatically short the midday uh, shadows are going to be. And the sharper they're going to be, the harder they're going to wind up being. Back east in Florida, you know, this difference between winter midday and summer midday isn't quite as dramatic as it is here. That's because Florida is lower, you know, closer to the equator. The sun doesn't have as dramatically a shift between summer and winter. That's why it doesn't get as cold. Uh, and so therefore, the, you see less of a dramatic uh, sort of change between midday uh, winter and midday summer. So if this class happened to be held in the spring and you were doing this follow the sun project in late April, you would, you would see a different quality of light to the midday. Let's move on into your, uh, your blue hour. Blue hour again, it, you're not going to have, you're not going to have the, uh, the, the directional light because the light is being essentially reflected off the atmosphere. The sun is not up. Uh, it's going to reflect off the atmosphere. Blue hour kind of light could also be uh, during the midday. You could get that during midday if it's a totally overcast day. Uh, today, this is December 12th. Today, it's incredibly cloudy. It's it just gray out. Um, it, I don't know if it's going to snow again today or what, but um, you know, because we have a thick blanket of cloud over us, the light that is out there is going to be basically blue hour until that those clouds break. Blue hour is where the light is, is essentially being reflected um, rather than directed, no, no directional light. So because of that, you have your shadows are going to be incredibly soft and you're going to be focusing more on shape and color um, and texture, which you did. Uh, clearly, you're watching my, my videos and listening to the, uh, the sort of instructional stuff that we're talking about and what would be healthy to focus on. This is a super cool photo, man. Uh, you know, the, the uh, shallow depth of field, this, the idea that this uh, nest is sort of hanging there, uh, it, there's an optical illusion almost that's happening to it. It's, it's, it's just the, the, the perfect kind of uh, subject you would do under this kind of lighting. This one gets a little bit um, busy. Uh, it doesn't have the sort of intensity that some of your other compositions have, like this uh, or even this. Uh, this one gets a little bit, I'm not sure where my eye is supposed to go. Um, but again, that, uh, you, most of your images are very, very intentionally um, composed so that we can tell what it is that you, the photographer, want us to be um, looking at. Uh, great time of day to be shooting, you know, things like this, where you've got, you know, a ton of color and that kind of thing. Um, this isn't the most dynamic of photographs. It's almost like a portrait of the waste management bin, but uh, you're utilizing the light uh, perfectly in, in, in this. Here you get the, a, a sort of a backlit sort of situation. You see that a lot in, in blue hour uh, uh, explorations, and so uh, I'm not surprised to see one of those put in. Golden hour, you're getting the directional light, but the shadows are a bit longer. You're going to have, whoa, what happened there? Whoa, we're zooming around, aren't we? Um, let's bounce back. I'll use these. Uh, you're going to get, you know, the directional light is going to have a slightly different temperature to it. Uh, you're going to have longer shadows. Like I said, the difference between uh, midday long shadows and golden hour long shadows is going to be less dramatic. There's going to be less difference between those two up here in Colorado uh, in December. They're gonna, you're gonna still have long shadows um, in, the, um, in, in midday. The difference is gonna be the hardness of the shadows. They should feel and look softer uh, during, the, during the blue hour. Also, you know, you're gonna have a bit more of, it, uh, of, of a directional um, indication on, on golden hour because the light is, should be much lower in the, uh, in the sky. This is just a fun photograph. Uh, I can see this with an editorial basically having some text here or maybe a headline up here. Uh, this would be a great graphic, uh, great for a graphic designer. Um, you know, 
really cool photo. Again, I think this, this is almost editorial in, in the way that, uh, that you're approaching um, the, the, the photograph. The photograph itself is a little bit sort of, there's a lot of negative space going on, but it lends itself to someone who might be uh, looking to use this photography within maybe like a picture story or an article or, or something like that. Let's move into uh, your mixed lighting. Now, the first few here, I, I think it's a little too early almost uh, because I can see how blown out the sky is. It's not quite dark enough, which means that we haven't gotten to the time of day where it's super balanced. Uh, we're getting there here. It's getting closer here. And I think you start to approach it. So, um, but we don't quite get to that really perfect time um, when uh, the light is balanced yet. Your compositions are still just as strong and I can see you're still composing in a very uh, deliberate way. All of that, it works just, just perfectly. Um, the challenge here is to get that just that right time, just that right moment when the daylight under blue hour, the sun should be down all, all the way, uh, the daylight from the blue hour and the intensity of the artificial light are balancing themselves out. Uh, and I, I think we just haven't quite got the right time of day because the sky looks so bright right now. Um, it should be just a little bit darker. Um, you're on your way though. This was probably the most challenging of all of them when it comes to uh, finding those. If you want a good example of, of um, you know, almost a perfect um, uh, uh, balance is gonna be, I'm gonna look, look hers up, probably embarrassed, but well, she won't know. So. Uh, although she may be seeing this one. I kind of uh, uh, mentioned it. We're going to see if I can find it. Um, follow the sun, follow the sun, follow the sun, follow the sun. Should be down here. Here it is. Um, I'm going to take a look at, at what, what Sarah put up uh, for one of her shots. This is it. This is, this is what we're looking for. Um, she just nailed it, knocked it through the park. You can see that the dark and the light, the, the, the sun is completely down. We're getting, you know, uh, illumination from these artificial lights are just as intense as the artificial, as, a, as the blue light that's coming here from the sky. So this is what we were looking for. I think you were well on your way. We just didn't, you didn't find just the right exact time there. And even on hers, she got, it got a little dark on her here. Uh, over here, it was a little bit too bright still, stuff like that. So it's a tough one to get. But uh, if you're looking for one that is like, this is it, this is it. This is what you would have uh, hopefully been able to find. All right. I normally don't do that, but, uh, but, but hers was just such a stellar photograph. Uh, I had to, had to do that. Now, your takeaway, um, it's, it's great. What you're doing is you are conceptualizing your knowledge and offering these images as evidence of that knowledge is exactly what we're trying to do. It's showing that you not only can say it, but here's the, the images to, to back it up. This effectively is your learning portfolio. It's the portfolio that you would show somebody to say, hey, this is what I've learned uh, in this class. Um, like many others, you were uh, initially coming to the class with this thought, I really would like to know more about my camera, uh, which we did, we covered that, of course. Um, but then I'm very happy that you discovered all the other components that photography isn't really about the camera as much as it is about light. Um, photography and the camera's relationship is the same as painting and a brush, writing and a pencil. Right? Uh, the pencil is just the vehicle to, to make a mark. The camera is just a, a, a means to record what you're observing light-wise. So you discovered that, uh, and it's evident in your writing. Uh, you've also, you know, you've got three, you know, really good, um, excellent um, bits of feedback from your peers, which says that they're really interested in what you what you have to say. Very happy that you decided to take this class. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what you might be able to uh, accomplish with, with video I, in, your, in your writing. You did say that, you know, taking videos is something also that you, you have been doing. The, the 70D is an excellent uh, camera to shoot video with. And, um, and you would certainly be welcome to, to take those courses. In fact, as Mediacom, I believe you would have electives that would allow you to apply those to it. So I would invite you to do that, encourage you to do that. Um, you have an excellent break. Uh, it was good to work with you, and we'll see you in um, 21, hopefully. All right. Bye-bye now.